Hi, Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts, here to share scripture that pertain to those three uh, videos we did with Teresa, the former witch, now born again Christian. Okay, listen to this. This is uh, Ephesians, no, this is Luke chapter 11. I've got Ephesians on my mind. Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 24 to 26 and followed, of course, by Pat's two cents. All right. This is interesting. I, I, when I first read this, I was real careful. I said, whoa, here we go. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. Now, this is the spirit walking through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. Now, let me go, let me, let me handle this before we go any further. This is referring to a person who has just asked God for forgiveness and accepted Jesus into his heart. This is the very beginning stages. Because you notice when you first give your heart to the Lord, you, you got an onslaught of temptation coming at you. Well, this is the reason. Because demons are totally ill at rest when they are forced out of their home, the person. I'm going to read that again. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. They really think you belong to them, funny. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. That's the cleansing of salvation. 26. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than themselves. Like, come on, you guys, I need help. I got to get back in my house. They evicted me. All right. And they entered in. They enter in, right? And dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Well. We were talking about demonic encounters, demonic attachments, all kind of stuff. Now, I know some of you parents and some of you adults just like watching Harry Potter and magicians and all kind of little stuff, little magical movies with a little witchcraft here and a little uh, little white magic there. And, you know, you got yourself some, uh, uh, what do you call those... Um, Witches, warlocks, uh, all kind of little goodies up in those movies. And yes, they are fascinating to watch, to see the amount of imagination that goes into them. But guess what? All that imagination adds up to a hill of beans when it comes to me putting my spirit at risk. So I won't entertain them, even though sometimes my human nature would like to see some of those. I won't. Because one thing I don't like, I don't like demons. I don't like evil. And I don't like being bothered and attacked by the dark side. There's nothing I want uh, to have in common with a, the author of lies, with a, a world of lies. I mean, everything about that is evil. Even the feeling you get with it is nasty. I don't want to cohabit with that. So, I disassociate myself with every single thing that associates itself with the occult. And you should too. Yes, it's fascinating. Yes, it's enticing. Yes, it's imaginative and creative to watch. But no, it's not worth it, baby. It is not worth it. At those times when you get tempted to watch or you get tempted to entertain yourself with some of the mystical sides of life, you have to ask yourself, huh, whom am I going to serve? Huh, do I want to be all the way in the light or do I just want a little bit of darkness up in there too? Baby, if you want a little darkness, you will you will lose your light. I'm going to tell you right now. There's no such thing 
as eternal security to the point where you could live like a hellion and you can play with the demonic and, and, and go to bed with God's enemies and think that God is going to welcome you. God does not cohabit with sin. God does not cohabit with evil. It's either light or it's dark. You draw the line and you decide which side of that line you're going to stand on. And the reason that I caution you, we were talking about something we weren't able to really delve into as deeply as, as we would like to. Teresa was talking about one of the things we don't realize is that when a person plays with the dark side, plays with those dark little toys and those little movies and games, Dungeons and Dragons and all these different games. Oh my, oh, it's fascinating. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there goes a demon. Oh, there goes a creature. I mean, there's a beast. Ooh, ooh. You know, it, it's, it's fascinating, titillating, all of that. But it's not worth it. Because when you open a door, one thing that we don't realize, demons are very legalistic, way more than we are. We think our courts are legalistic, demons are even more so. Because they know their rights. And once we have given them a right, oh, they ride that baby all the way. I mean, they jump on that pony and they take it as far as they can get away with. So you have to remember, even as adults, as parents, as young adults, whatever. Some of you might be young kids with younger little kids in your homes. When you toy with that stuff, what you're doing is opening up an evil door. And when you see that your little brother, your little sister, your baby, your child is acting weird, your pets are acting weird and aggressive, and you've opened those doors, you almost have to go to some Christians to come in your house and cleanse it. But you really need to give your hearts to the Lord because it will only be clean for a moment. That's why those demons try to find other demons to get back in. They only can get back in if they have legal right. Anybody can be kicked out for a moment. You can get rid of a roach for a minute, but there are going to be 10 more to take its place. So you have to make sure that you get rid of these roaches for good. And when I say roaches, I'm talking about demons. You cannot play with them. You can't patty cake. You can't accept a favor from them. You can't take a ride from them. And I mean, anybody who's in it, stay as far away from them as the East is from the West. Don't let them cross your door. Don't go anywhere near them. I mean, you have to keep your whole environment spiritually as clean as a whistle because little cracks and little doors even little resentments and, and uh, decisions to not forgive or go in a, and smooch with somebody else's wife or husband or you grown men wanting to play with some little girl. I mean, you know, this list can go so far ad infinitum. You know that. It can get real crazy. And I'm not going that far. But when you open the door for demons to come in, you have not only opened the door into your world, you have opened the door into your loved ones. So if they can't get to you or if they got you so much that they're not worried about you because you're locked up, tied up, tangled up in their mess, they've got an inroads now to your kids. And when you wonder why they can't get off of drugs and you wonder why they won't leave that man alone who's beating them every other day and you wonder why your child is acting weird and looking weird and playing all that angry music and so rebellious against you, you wonder why the door is wide open. You have allowed the enemy to come in and sup with you and yours. You have given that permission.
And it is your responsibility to turn that thing around and get rid of those bad boys before they get rid of everything you cherish. They're only going to be nice for a while. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Think about it.